we just check out of the hotel and it's the last day of the conference it's really the last like half day because we're doing a church service today and like one more talk and then everyone's hanging out and heading home but both of us have a nine hour drive so that's gonna be most of our days mm -hmm. what was your favorite part from this weekend uh. That's a good question. A lot of favorites. There, there's a lot of favorites. There's a lot of favorites. <laughs> like how to pick the top favorite? Man. Um, wow. Going to the mosque was, was exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we went to two. And neither... Well, were you you were there when they let everybody into the second one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when the police came. Yeah. And I think that for me that's what made it <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so apparently somebody made a false uh was it report, report? false yeah. report saying that there was a fight and a shooting going on while we were standing there in front of the mosque when everybody else was just everybody was just standing around looking at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody was just kind of like hanging out front talking a few of a few of the group had gone inside at that point and then uh and we're just kind of hanging out talking and and there were it was um some congregants were showing up so so some um like muslims were showing up and just kind of walking up to the mosque and we were just saying hi at that point um just kind of saying hi like greeting people as they were coming up mm -hmm. and uh, just being friendly and then it was kind of like the inner circle were the ones that were actually like starting up conversations and then um but then the police rolled by kind of slow yeah and then when they stopped i knew well somebody from inside probably called or somebody nearby saw like a big group that maybe didn't fit in yeah and um but when they came up they had kind of a calm demeanor but so it was kind of striking when the guy the first officer you know when we asked like is there you know is there a problem when he said well yeah we had a call about a fight and i thought <laughs> mm. Yeah, there was this lady going around uh, in a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair, and she was taking pictures of everybody's license plates, and she looked very angry, so I'm thinking maybe it was her that made the call or something, or told someone to make the call. I don't know. Yeah, because the, when the officer said that, that they had a call that there was a fight, and we, you know, we, we were kind of all in shock, like, why would anyone say that? <laughs> and Or are you sure you got the right place? Yeah. And, um because it was like so far from that and then uh and then we told him like no you know and uh nothing like that we're just you know we're just out here you know being friendly sharing the gospel with anyone that wants to hear it mm -hmm. and uh and then and then they said okay because we had a they, he had he had made some comment referring to a shooting or a gun or a rifle something to that effect or maybe maybe all three and uh so then we were really concerned and and um one of the one of the people with the group said, "Well, isn't that illegal to to make a a false yeah. you know report like that?" And um, but the the police didn't seem they didn't even really care to follow up on that. Um, but uh, which so there was actually a crime that was committed. Yeah. And but they weren't really they weren't concerned with that. They were more concerned with any type of conflict or whatever. But um, but then when they went over to the front of the mosque. I was kind of surprised because they were kind of like high-fiving the, 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 you know, the, the, the Muslims at the mosque. And I was thinking like, you know, they They're just, their side. they just accused us. <laughs> yeah. it, like they basically, um, you know, that because making an accusation like that, they could have had a totally different response to us when they pulled up. Like, yeah. um, they could have come like, it could have been like bear cats and SWAT teams and, you know, with AR-15s and you know what I mean like it could have been pretty serious if they yeah. would have taken the threat credibly right and uh, which would have put all of us in danger um, so I was kind of a, I was offended when I saw how they were like treating them after they just made an accusation that could have got us like injured or right. killed but um but then when they came back over to us they were just as friendly to us and then when we told them what we were doing one of the cops pulled his sleeves up and he showed us his his uh, tattoos and he's like oh well i'm i'm with you guys you know and it turns out he was a pastor cross tattoos he had cra yeah cross yeah. tattoos and um he had it was a, a lot of christian art you know all over his arms and uh and then he explained to us that he was a pastor down the road and uh and then he gave us a whole backstory on how when he was a little boy that 
his dad would take him to that mosque, and mm -hmm. he grew up Muslim. And uh, and then at some point in his um, early years, he told us that he had gone to his mom and said that something was missing, something was lacking in Islam, and uh, and that he found Christ. And and since then, um, several of his other family members have also turned to Christ. Nice. So it's a really great story. And uh, and he said he had a he had a Muslim name. And uh, I can't remember what it was, but <clears throat> but Usama Dakdak was with us, yeah. and and they had a conversation about the meaning of his name. And the, the officer said that he didn't he didn't change his name because he wanted it to be a, a, an opportunity for him to share that story to talk with Muslims, right? Yeah, because they would say, "Oh, you're you have an Arabic name," and you know, and they would, you know, mm -hmm. they knew the meaning of the name. Then it kind of gave him an opportunity to say, yeah, but I'm not Muslim and here's why. Right. You know, so it was, it was really, it was a really cool story. So. Cool. Tell, uh, tell everybody about the recording two days ago. Not last night, but two days ago. Which part? The, uh, oh, oh, your oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll give a little backstory about that too. So, um, <laughs> there have been two recordings this weekend, two late night recordings. And two nights ago, um, it was a remake of a David and Nabil video, and I won't say much more than that, except that there needed to be like a crowd in the video because there were main characters talking and a crowd responding. And so we had a whole bunch of people here at the conference, so we just decided we, you know, that'd be the crowd. So we got to be a part of the crowd, which was fun. Um, but there was a whole lot of really funny stuff going on. And it took a while to record because of that. So go it ahead. It was so good. I'm gonna laugh for weeks <laughs> about that one. The one. Yeah. The one was so good. I hope that they use it. But it was so good <laughs> that the next guy that was supposed to ha that had a line right after, he, he messed broke. up. Yeah, he broke character because it was just unexpected. And it was it was golden. They. There was some response that the crowd like the crowd was getting angry at the main characters. And they were bouncing insults and replies around the crowd. So I was like, you know, you're a racist, I hate you, all that kind of stuff. But one guy had a specific line, which was, it was either you're a bigot or you're a disgusting bigot. And when he got up and said his line, how did he say it? Yeah, because it was um, the first person, um, I think it was, you, you're, you're, ra you're that's a racist. racist. That's racist, yeah. or you're a racist, or something. And then he was supposed to say, you know, you disgusting bigot, or something. And then the next guy was supposed to stand up and kind of point at the, you know, main characters, the main characters, yeah. and say, uh, these guys are Islamophobes. Islamophobes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, you know, and then <laughs> so we did we did it the first time, and the guy said, you know, you disgusting bigot. He just kind of like delivered it straight, like regular, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so. Like how everyone was kind of expecting it. I mean, it was good. Yeah. It was like everybody did a great job, but um, but it was a little more it, like expected delivery. Uh huh. And uh, and so then they said, well, this time, not don't have so many like so much space between, like not, uh, like kind of squish it the lines together to make it a little tighter. And so they did. We did it again, but this time instead of just saying "you disgusting bigot," but he he kind of had like a growl in his voice, like yeah. a, like kind of a gospel growl. Yeah, he did. And um, so we were like, "Man, that was good." But then when they did it again, this time he was like, he said "you disgusting bigot," you know. And we weren't expecting it. And the way that he did it was so good. And everybody held it together until the next guy stood up and he broke. And after that. The, the dam broke and everybody started laughing. <laughs> that would have been a good one to keep it if everybody had kept it together, but we, we couldn't. The other, like, my other favorite <laughs> well, part wait, in that. Yeah. David had to stand up and tell yeah, him, yeah. stop being so funny. He was like, yeah, yeah. you're going to need to stop. Be, you're going to need to not be as funny or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, the other part that, I, that was just like, was really golden was um, right in the middle of everything we're all like kind of in the zone you know doing the, getting it done and uh and this guy right in the middle he like just jumps up he's like i'm sorry everybody i gotta go to the bathroom <laughs> but leading up to that we had just practiced um more hateful one, comments yeah more, more angry like comments. more like random crowd responses you know boo, yeah it was like on. yeah boo come on and that's, that's disgusting. disgusting and uh <laughs> so when he stood up 
to say, I'm sorry, everybody, I got to go to the bathroom. We were all kind of like, uh, you know, we were, we all, just we all had the went, exact, Boo. we all had the exact <laughs> yeah. responses that we had been yeah. practicing. <laughs> And uh, so somebody, you know, oh, it was like a, a couple people all said boo at the same time. And uh, and then, like, one person goes, you know, like, went along with what, what had been happening. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, uh, come on. And then <laughs> a, a sec, you know, second or two later, somebody's like, that's disgusting. <laughs> and, and, uh, everybody was a comedian for yes, 30 seconds. It was great. But it was like improv, and oh, everybody yeah. was involved. It was, and they did great. It was truly remarkable. And... And I thought about it later, you know, we talked about it later on, how how good everybody did, like, despite acting ability. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it was like the right people kind of were selected to for right those s spots. Yeah, it all went really well. David was saying later on that it's going to be the worst video ever, but I think he says that about every video. So, Speaking of other videos, um, what about the recording last night? Last night was really interesting, and it was it was a cool opportunity to kind of be part of, like just a witness, you know, because I've always been curious, like, what's it like behind the scenes when they do these things, you know? We're we're talking about a boom boom room video. We're uh, going to be recording a boom boom room video here soon, so uh, I don't know if I can turn this camera around. Uh, episode of that. Yeah, so they we recorded one of those last night. They allowed us to come back and uh, help out. Yeah. So which was cool. It was really cool to kind of be like hands on and and uh, kind of contributing to the the magic. And uh, so yeah, so they they were recording. Um, and I thought, what a crazy, uh, I guess, like, video to be part of, because it's, uh, it's an interesting story to me, you know, and it's a, it's a major, like, historical, you know, uh, account or, or whatever of, you know, of Muhammad's life is, is when, uh, when he was poisoned mm -hmm. at, um, at Kaibar. And right. so, um, so to be there and see Hatun as the... <laughs> The, the Jewish, Jewish woman, woman poisoning him, <laughs> and, and she had a shirt that said "Death to Muhammad." But one of his, but everyone knows. Yeah, one of his lines read. was, "Hey, I like your shirt." Um, I wish I knew. I wish I knew what something. it said, but I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows I can't read. And um, this is before, and then start to lean forward, and then to, and then you're going to come back up with one of them. All right. So run this, run this line like two or three times like this. Okay. Um, skin forward. What? Oh. I know it's your favorite. I ask your companions, just let me add little more spices. But yeah, so, and we're, you know, we had kind of like helped with some of the, the set and then, um, and then it was time to kind of be quiet so they could do their, they could start recording. So, you know, we're sitting just on the other side of this, like the tent, Yeah. but it was a mesh. So you could see, you could see through it. And, um, so you could, you could like view what was going on inside and, uh, so that was really, it was hilarious, and I can't wait for that one to come out, because Hatoon did a great job, and like, just seeing all the little props, like, you know, the, I don't want to like give, I don't know if we should like tell details, but uh... That video will definitely come out before this one. I mean, there was some, there was some crazy stuff that she puts in his food. Like, yes. she's like smiling in yes. the camera, like <laughs> dumping all sorts of nasty stuff into his food. And um, yeah, and I think it was real lamb. Yeah, it was. Um, also, we left early and got back to the hotel at what three? Yeah. Went to bed at three. Well, there was a so there was a situation, and we were we were kind of sticking around, kind of like pulling for them, like right. They had a video file get corrupted, so we wanted to see if they were able to fix it. But after that, we left, and they really hadn't gotten into most of the recording yet. Mm -hmm. So we're about let's see, yeah, we're gonna have to leave in a minute and actually go over to the church service this morning, but we're gonna see if they got any sleep at all. <laughs> yeah. Because they may have been up all night, we don't know. Um, but we're the ones that have nine hour drives ahead of us, so we had to come back and get some sleep. So, 
But yeah, that was a lot of fun. And there's oh, yeah. there's like two like almost too many good moments to mention. And uh, we'd be here for three hours talking about everything. But yeah, meeting the people, everybody was real, really great and down to earth and uh, real, real personable and easy to talk to. And um, met a lot of people that were attendees that were really great. Yeah. And uh, that you know made some contacts that a lot of good we're connections. Follow up with in the future. And one last thing I'll say is the. A lot of the people who are speakers at this conference have YouTube channels or some kind of presence online. And it's so refreshing to see all of them really have a teamwork mentality with all this kind of stuff. Nobody's a lone wolf who just wants to work by themselves and put everybody else to the side. Everybody else is really, everybody is really generous, really giving, really uh, wanting to build other people up. Um, in lots of different ways, so that was super cool and encouraging as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, we should yeah. probably get going. Yeah, but yeah. It was pretty much if you want to be involved, there's opportunity. Yeah, and we're constantly clamoring to have more people join this kind of stuff. So if you want to start a YouTube channel, an apologetics or whatever, or any do kind, it, or any kind of ministry. Yeah, do it, <clears throat> and there will be people there that can help you. So, yeah. Yep. With that, we will head over to church and drive for nine hours right and uh and my one of my biggest takeaways was um in one of the presentations was there's out of the hundreds of um of the, out of the hundreds or thousands of belief systems it really comes down to two, two. there's there's the people that think they can save themselves and then there's the, the people that think they need a savior right so that is that is a good place to end it that's a great message yeah there's only two think you can save yourself or you need a savior. That savior is Jesus. Amen.